Hello everyone, welcome to Art Mood. My name is Matthew. We are doing this art channel to share the joy of looking at art, which can be historical or contemporary, paintings, sculptures, or even photography. We will be choosing a different one for each month. We would like to hear from you, so join us or leave a message if you like what we do. Ophelia isn't feeling well at the moment, um, so we decided to change the topic this week. Next week we'll, we'll go back to normal. Uh, send some good vibes to her so she gets better soon. Um, so we were supposed to talk about Philip Gaston today, but that'll be next week when she's 100%. But I still wanted to talk about something today. So I figured, why not talk about Hisashi Eguchi? So, yeah, let's start. So I found out about him from um, Twitter and um, Instagram a few years ago. Here he is. Um, but actually, I, I knew about his work earlier than that. So I started following him maybe about... Um, two and a half years ago um, but even when I was in Japan about 10 years ago I saw his work when I was uh, traveling there just here and there like on clothing and uh, posters and the like but what really stuck with me was how simple yet detailed his work is so I figured why not look at his work today He's actually released a lot of books uh, compiling his work. Um, but we're just looking at one today. And only just like a few pages of it. So I got this book also when I was in Japan. About, yeah, maybe about three years. No, yeah, maybe about two years ago. Um, so yeah, but first let's let let's get some background on this guy. So, he was born in Kumamoto, Japan in 1956. He started, he, he got interested in manga because he would actually watch a lot of Astro, he would read a lot of Astro Boy when he was a kid. Um, that was, you know, that was the big thing back then. It's still considered a very classic manga anime even now. Actually, when I was in Kyoto, there's, um, I don't know if they've removed it, but I remember seeing a very big, um, statue of Astro Boy there so it's a very it's a very big deal there um, several years later he actually entered a manga competition for Shonen Jump and he actually won the Young Jump Award in 1977 and then he made a few manga whilst being part of Jump so one of his uh, a few of his manga that he, he worked on was Suzume Pirates and his more popular one, Stop, Hibari-kun. Um, at the time, he felt that since he was making a comedy manga, he didn't need to work so much on the art. He felt like people just read it to laugh. They don't really read it to, like, um, to look at the artwork. Um, but then, around that time, the, um, there was... Um, a few artists that were getting quite popular, a few uh, manga artists, like uh, Katsuhiro Otomo, who maybe some of you might know as the creator of Akira. He was really like blown back by it, like wow, this this is really great artwork. And it actually made him suspend some of his um some of his manga, especially Hibari kun, because he felt like he just he should he should make he should become better as an artist before he starts um creating um more of this um manga but um actually the the manga has been on hiatus for i think like 19 years or something he might have stopped because his mind has changed a lot since when you since he was young 
you know so maybe the ideas aren't there anymore or he's just lost interest we don't know but apparently it was a big issue because he would constantly keep going on hiatus with some of his work so yeah that's part of it so he felt like he needed to step up his work so nowadays um, he doesn't really make manga anymore he, he just does um, illustrations um, but particularly he likes to il illustrate women which he calls Kanojo. Kanojo roughly translates to she or her or sometimes girlfriend. So essentially the, the reason for that is um, well when he worked on a manga Hibarikun it one of the main characters of the story is a, a boy who looks very much like a woman who pretty much has you know he has the um he's been assigned male at birth but he was essentially a woman he dresses and talks and acts like a woman and and it was a it was a gag manga it was a, it was a um, comedy manga so a lot of the humor would just come from everyone being like whoa it's a man but he looks so beautiful as a woman whoa so um Yes, and he says there wasn't really anything deep about it because he wanted it to just be comedy. But he did say in an interview that he wished that he was born a woman himself. So, he, well, not specifically a woman, just a beautiful woman. He admires how beautiful women can be and all the things they can wear and appear as. So, the manga is played for laughs, but deep down it was maybe something that he really wanted to kind of emulate somehow um, so this um, desire to be a woman you can kind of see it fueled in a lot of his um, illustrations most of his work is essentially just women very beautiful women wearing being very fashionable having beautiful hair very um, beautiful skin and um, because of this kind of work, actually a lot of companies wanted to want hired him to just make work for them. So he would make like telephone cards, posters, designs on clothing, um, ca uh, catalogs. They just really enjoyed his work. And uh, actually, um, so yeah, the one on the left is Stop Hibarikun. And the one on the right is um, Suzume Pirates. So this is kind of how his artwork looked like before. Back when he didn't really feel like he needed to do um, much with it. So yeah, his mind has changed a lot since then. And I think you do see some of his artwork of his um, original stories out there. In a more modern um, look. So, yes, um, as for why he draws the way he does now, um, he was very influenced by pop art from the US. So he liked artists like Roy Lichtenstein, who, just like him, uses uh, not so many colors, just, um, just very uh, flat colors. In one interview he said, I like to use organized lines. The less lines, the better. And what people seem to praise, well, not seem, what people praise him for is his use of warm, warm colors or calm colors. So I've been talking a lot. So let's actually um, look at the book. So this book I bought in in Japan. It's called Step. Um, I had to scan in the images because um, it's kind of hard finding like images online. So they don't look as good as they could be, but I tried my best. Um, personally, I would recommend you guys buying the book yourselves. Or, I don't know, if you're in Japan and maybe you go to somewhere like uh, Jimbocho, you can maybe get a used copy or something. Um, you can also get it on um, Amazon 
um, playasia or otaku.co.uk. Um, those kind of places. And on, on Amazon, it was um, £39 last time I checked. I can't even remember how much I paid this one. I don't know how much this was when I bought it in Japan. But, uh, yeah. Um, he made other books like Kanojo, King of Pop, um, and some others we might discuss further on. But, uh, yeah. Let's, uh, let's go. This is the first one we look at at the moment. So, a lot of the work in his book are actually just based on, like, um commissions he did for companies and and the like some of it is his personal stuff but often it's a lot of his work is used for commercials and the like the one on the left i'm not if not sure if it was used for anything but it kind of demonstrates the way he sort of colors often um he just uses like one color for like i say the skirt and one color for the top like Kind of like um, if you see like a screen print, um, they usually a, a a general screen print would be just maybe two or three colors, maybe more sometimes. So like pop art, more or less. So you have on the left, it's just kind of black and white, and you have the one on the right, which is um, yeah, there's a bit of color there. Yes, um, but really what I liked about um, this one is just how simple it is. He's also very good at drawing hair, which I, you know, which is something I like to emulate, but um, I'm still kind of learning. And um, on the right here... Um, Often he's um, commissioned to make um, CD jackets for certain musicians. So this one is for a group called Tokyo Ska Paradise Orchestra. For it's, it's, it's specifically for their album called Uso Suku Kuchibiru, which means something like Mouth That Tells Lies. Um, I actually like it. Um, I actually googled the, in the group and it actually looks like the artist um, but I, what I really like the most about this particular um, illustration there's like little um, rough lines here so they've not been rubbed out but it makes it look very um, I don't know good I don't know a good word to use handmade I don't know it looks like it looks human they look they look like human mistakes and um i think that looks i think that's great and um you also have her hair which looks amazing you know um i again i try to i like to draw um um in intricate hair so i often like trying to work on uh, strands of hair when i um paint or draw either traditional or digital but it looks really amazing here and even like um, the wood on the guitar looks very fantastic it's very amazing shading and you still have some low uh, things here that's not been rubbed out but I think it really adds more to the um, image so yeah that's one and it's also a black and white one here he essentially made two so one was like a kind of special edition and one was like the regular edition of this uh, CD. But uh, yeah. Um, everything about this is chef's kiss. It looks amazing. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I also kind of like this uh, um, semi-realistic art style. So this one is a bit more anime. You can see the really big eyes here and the tiny nose. But here it's very... It's semi-realism, uh, not realism, realistic, yeah. Semi, it's a semi-realistic look, and yeah, it just looks fantastic. He's really good at paying attention to detail. 
So I didn't I haven't mentioned this before, but I'm I'm a really big sucker for like images of like crowds of people. And I think it's a hard thing to do because um you have to draw different clothing and different hairstyles and different heights and um perspective is really important so you have um characters in the back and characters in the front and you need to um you need to illustrate that in a way where you can tell that it's an actual crowd it's actually kind of hard to do i think um let's see let me zoom in that might be better so yeah on the left here you have uh it's in black and white i couldn't scan the whole page but um but you kind of get the idea. Again, here you can kind of see like it's a little rough here. It's not completely smooth for the edges. Even here a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. This image really captures the diversity of people in um in a in a Japanese metropolis. You know, different styles, different ages. But of course it's mostly women. But that's uh, that's kind of his style. He does there are some men and some a boy here, but uh, in general um it's women. The thing he really likes about women especially is uh, the fashion. And it's uh this image is really good at showing that. I mean yeah, let me show the colored part. That's his comfort zone, women. So, yeah, that's his strength. And I think it's a good thing, you know. If um, Actually, a lot of... Um, I follow many, many, many artists and... Uh, traditional artists and digital artists on um, Twitter. And a lot of them really like drawing women. Some of them can only, actually a lot of them can only draw women, which isn't a bad thing. I think it's, um, it never gets stale to draw women. You can put them in, you know, you, I, personally for me, I think you can, um, you can be more creative with women when you design them because they can wear almost anything. They have a lot more ranges in what they can wear compared to, um, men. So I I can understand why it's uh, and it's also like maybe this is just me, but I sometimes think drawing women is a bit more difficult, at least a little bit more difficult than drawing men. So I think that um, being an expert on drawing women is uh, quite good, and it might be why people um, like to do it. If you look at a lot of old painters, men would generally depicted as the strength whilst women were depicted as the beauty and it hasn't really changed that much except maybe now you have a lot more like images of men being depicted as beautiful and not just not just women and yeah i think this was used for like a festival the only part of it i can read is a card Fiesta 2016 but I, I can't read the rest uh, but yeah it looks good right a lot of detail it's still f kind of flat colors but um, he added a little extra here and there very detailed yeah I like it so um these ones I actually have seen quite a lot, a lot of them online. Um, these are for a company called Real Wine. Um, actually, I found that they actually have a Twitter page. If you go on that Twitter page, you see a lot of Eguchi's um, illustrations there. Um, he, he's made a lot of illustra illustrations for this company in the form of a guide for their selection of wine. Um, when I was watching the interview um, recently, you actually see him making one of these um, illustrations for one of these um, uh, real wine illustrations. Um, he has the bottle right, right to his face, you know, it, with his left hand, and he's just drawing it with his right hand. 
you know, and it, it was it really interesting to see him work. So in the interview, you actually see that he draws in pencil first, which makes sense. Um, and I imagine he just puts it on computer afterwards. Because a lot of these look like they were done on computer. Coloring on computer is a lot easier, so yeah. And there's no mistakes with the colors bleeding out. So yeah, more definitely on computer. So yeah, the wine bottle sort of like made with such great pre uh, precision. You see here. The lighting, the shape, even like the, the font. It looks very photorealistic. And um, in this book, there's like loads of um, illustrations with different uh, wine bottles. But I picked these ones because, um, well, often with some of these um, illustrations, you can kind of pick up a narrative from them. It might not be very obvious, you know, but you can kind of make it, you can kind of get a feel of it by just looking. Um, like example, you can tell it's autumn, just, you know, you have these re semi-realistic leaves on the ground. And she's dressed in a very autumn way. She's wearing a scarf. She's wearing um, not a thick jacket, but a sort of thick um, top, long skirt. And she's sitting in a park with a bottle of wine. Now you might think, oh, maybe this woman is very lonely. But I think maybe the bottle is for a friend, or maybe she's um, maybe she's meant to meet a guy there, you know, for a date. And maybe she felt like the bottle would be a good gift for him. You know, or maybe she's meeting some friends, but I don't know. Like, I feel like a park in autumn is a very good romantic setting. I feel like they could have, he could have also just not had the leaves on the ground. And maybe I could have still felt that it was autumn because of his choice of colors. It's a kind of a big contrast compared to the image on the right, which is a lot more brighter. Uh, you can kind of feel like, oh, it's summer. And she's outside because you have these road signs on the left. And uh, you can see a leaf here. So definitely outside. And um, generally in this work, you don't really see a lot of uh, foreigners. I say foreigners, but I mean like, you know, non-Japanese. Um, but in this one, he actually uses a lot more colors. There's a lot more colors for the hair, the clothing, the skin. There's a lot, and there's a lot of creases on the clothing. Um, what else? A lot more detail on the hair as well, compared to the one on the left. Um, she's just drawn a lot more detailed compared to the um, um, to his other work. I don't know if it was a uh, choice by him or choice by the company maybe it was a way to reach out to customers um, outside the country but yeah his choice of colors give this um, image a sort of summer feel do, do you feel summer when you look at it because I, I certainly do and um, yeah I noticed in a lot of um, Japanese media, they often depict um, foreign people with blonde hair and blue eyes. I mean, it's a bit more complicated than that, but I think it's uh, it's an apt choice. It's very, it's very summery when you look at it. It's a nice pink for summer. Also, very uh, detailed um, illustration of a wine bottle. Probably the same method, so kept it very close to his face and and then um, drew it. Just a moment. So yeah, it's just a really big contrast between the two. So you have this one which has a bit, um, the one on the left. It has um, more colder colors, whilst the one on the right is more detailed and um, has and it's more warmer. Yellows, kind of warm pinks, that sort of thing. 
But yeah, um, I'm not actually sure how we did these leaves, but they look very detailed and I love them. Um, also the skirt, very detailed. Um, even for me, drawing this kind of um, patterns on clothing is very difficult. So good on him for being able to do that. Let's look at the next one. Um, in the book, there's also some sketches he did. Um, sketches are a very good way of growing as an artist. And I'll be honest, I don't sketch that much. I rarely do that. Whenever I, I try to produce some work, I often... Um, I, I often make it, you know, final. So I don't practice drawing it. I just decide this is what I want to make and then I make it. Um, but I've, from starting this channel, I've realized that actually uh, sketch is incredibly important because um, I have a lot of issues with certain things I draw. So actually with sketching, it actually makes me learn what stuff I can work on. Um, saying that though, um, his sketches are really great. Like a lot of these can just pass as actual like work. Um, yeah, um, especially the hair. I, I, I can't. I, I, I should emphasize how good he is at um, drawing the hair. Even when he sketches, he still wants to pull a lot of detail on that. So, yeah. Um, the book is full of a lot of sketches, so I, I still recommend you guys get the book because even though this page is this is the only page I scanned for the sketches, it's still um, there's still a lot of sketches in there, and um, I just picked this one because it's my favorite. And uh, you can see on the right, um, I mentioned earlier that he likes Astro Boy, and it's what got him into Mongo and got him later into illustration. You have Osamu Tetsuka here, who, you know, he's the creator of Astro Boy, uh, Princess Knight. I think he made Kimber the White Lion and um, Phoenix. Actually, many he made many, many, many stories before he, he passed on. So actually, he influenced the manga industry in general. And he's often considered the godfather of manga. And um, you have uh, David Hockney here, who um, he's an artist. He creates pop art. Um, he created that famous um, work where there's the man in the swimming pool, and there's a, and there's another man outside the swimming pool uh, looking at the man in the swimming pool. Um, You've probably seen his work somewhere, because I think that's his most famous piece, uh, the swimming pool one. Um, I only call it the swimming pool one because I just it the name slipped my mind. Um, it'll, it'll come to me. Um, so yeah, so these are two of his influences. Um, his a lot of his work was based on American pop art, so you can kind of see where some of his um, ideas come from. So let's look at the last one for today. So when I was picking these, I tried to pick very diverse pieces of work in the book. So something that just shows his kind of range, shows what kind of stuff he can do. Uh, so this one, um, it's a collection of different uh, Japanese celebrities. I don't know most of them, but some of them I just know from like just um, some friends pointing them out. Although I definitely know Shinzo Abe. He is the um, he was the prime minister of Japan. He was the pre yeah he was the previous prime minister of Japan, and uh, this group of guys here. Um, Apparently, they're from a comedy music group called The Drifters. Um, I had to Google them, but um, yeah. Again, I believe these are kind of just like his, um, what he likes or what, like these are based on like stuff he wants to draw, stuff he likes. So I don't think a lot of these are commissions, they're just things that he likes to draw. 
Um, on the bottom right is a actress called Mariko Kaga. And um, yeah, she's drawn kind of and uh, differently, a little softer, not really any blemishes compared to the other people in this um in this set of um pictures, which just makes sense. It's this kind of it's his style. It's it's what makes him comfortable, um, and it's uh, it's nice. I like the lips especially. Um. It's also just nice to see him um, draw men, because often, uh, you know, some often some artists uh, find it hard to step out of um, their comfort zone, so they often just draw what, just what they like. Of course, he loves drawing women, but it's nice to see him like draw other things, and um, in a very realistic way too. I especially like the Abe one because of how like I can look at it immediately and just realize okay that's Shinzo Abe it's uh, very um, it's very realistic and there's still little rough lines here and there the box the boxes they're in are very rough probably not even really a ruler just freehand in um, a line I think a lot of his work is like that he just kind of has this thing that he has this kind of comfort zone he decides this is what makes me comfortable I don't want to do certain things that may be uncomfortable and I don't know you can kind of appreciate him for that because he actually he does a really good job of it so I don't think it's a problem um, I don't recognize so I only recognize maybe three of these here but um, if you know the rest, you can re leave them in the chat. I'd like to know who these people are. Um, it's a, uh, it's a uh, interest. It's it's interesting. I think even um this this guy on the next to Abe. Um, maybe he's really famous, but I I just don't know who he is. But it, that he looks he looks good, especially the shading on his face. Um, let me zoom in really quick. Yeah, you see some etchings here and there. And it's a nice technique from like manga. You tend to see this when people use uh, screen tones. And they use kind of a little thing to kind of make lines on the screen tones. Um, but you can actually do this digitally as well. Which I, I believe this is digital. I can't tell actually. It's really hard to tell with some of this work. Um, I want to believe it's just digital, but some of it looks kind of um, traditional. It's really hard to tell with him, but that's that's a good thing. Um, he actually has a lot of other pages of um, other celebrities, but I just picked these ones because it was kind of quite diverse. Men and women, well, one woman, but still. And... Uh, yeah. Also, I like this simple one here. Not very uh, complicated. Just very, very, very quick. But still very good at depicting the people. Because I, I googled them. I, I googled them earlier. I was like, oh yeah, they look exactly like um, the the artists, the the the, the performance, the performers. Yeah. Um. Actually, recently I saw a um a painting of Billie Eilish. A digital one and uh, it's one of my now is actually one of my favorite like digital paintings like of all time it's just really good actually it's, it's one of my wallpapers I'm not even really a fan of her but it's just really well done I can kind of I can appreciate um, art ba um, art that's of um, celebrities you know if they're really good and I think a lot of these are really good. Even this Heiachi one on the left. And I think that's it, actually. Um, so, um, I, a lot of the pictures I showed were just scratching the surface. So, 
did not so it's only I only showed maybe about I don't know eight pictures but there's at least 200 in the book maybe even more and um, and it's only ones that I actually really like really like I love all the images in the book but uh, I just picked ones that you know I, I can actually I actually really like and I can talk about with you guys he has a lot of other collections like I think recently he brought out a book called Kanojo and there's an old one called King of Pop there's also this book and the one on the left here called um, it's really hard to it's really hard to say it Eguchi Hisashi no Nurie Nurie I think that's it um, which is a, just a coloring book but it's with all of his artwork so you can use it to I, I it's very elusive though because I, I can't actually find it it was hard to actually even just find information on it so maybe if you're in Japan and you happen to come across it it might be a good reference to use um, you can use it to practice his style of coloring um, or just you know try your own thing I mean you can see like even the front cover that someone is kind of doing their own type of um, coloring on the on the front cover so yeah and I think it's a it's I think it's good practice for any budding artists because uh, nowadays you have actually have a lot of um, folks who are really into coloring books it was something that was for kids but now you have a lot of adult coloring books that I see in bookshops so yeah if you come across it I recommend getting it I'm probably gonna get it myself if I if I come across it but uh, it's very elusive maybe if I go to Japan and I go to Jimbocho I can find it um, oh I was just one other thing I wanted to mention is that um, there's this new anime called Sunny Boy and Iguchi did the art the the character designs for that one um, it's very new. I think it came out maybe this month or last month. Um, so you probably, maybe, maybe some of you are watching it already, or some of you have heard of it. Um, yeah, it's about a um, a class of students who all develop superpowers, and they're trapped in the void of like space or something. Um, yeah. It's uh, I heard it's quite good, and um, I recommend it if you especially want to see Eguchi's artwork in um, in motion. And yeah, um, I also left his Twitter and Instagram. I recommend going there because he's always posting stuff, like every few days. Um, I I follow him on all of them, so I follow all of them, so Instagram and Twitter. And I recommend you guys do too. Um, you won't be disappointed. And I think that's it for today. Please check out Eguchi's book, um, Step. Because I only showed you a few pages, but um, I recommend actually getting the book yourself. And um, I know of some Japanese books, they sort of just... Um, at least if you live outside of Japan they get uh, harder to um, purchase over time you know so that's why for me I went to Japan to get it but um, if you can get it here that's really great it's just gonna be maybe elusive after a few years so I would recommend getting it ASAP you definitely definitely won't be disappointed um, check out his social media and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. What did you think of Eguchi's artwork? Personally, I think it's very good. It's um, it's quite simple but quite detailed. Um, it's some it's something I would like to emulate one day. It's uh, I mean I follow a lot of artists and a lot of them like to use a myriad of colors, but um. I, I can appreciate this uh, pop art looking um, pieces of work and um, 
it might be something if if there's any artists out there if something you might want to try out you know so yeah if you have any comments or feedback please message next 20th century painter join us next week same time don't forget to follow us on twitch or subscribe to our channel on youtube under the same name have a good evening or a great day ahead. Ciao.